My uh, magic drum kit. That's good, man. Where'd you get that from? I got it from um, from Argos. It was like, yeah. I'll show you. I'll do it again. I'll show you. Ready? Two, One, three, three, four. four. Welcome. What day must it be today? What day uh, do these videos go? It's Mondays, isn't it? Tuesdays, actually. Tuesdays. That shows how much attention uh, he pays to it. Happy Tuesday to you all, and welcome to another episode of All About the Bass. Actually, this one's a bit different because uh, you know normally we pre-record these shows, but today we're actually doing it live. We're live. So you know, if you just turned on now, it's, uh, it's fantastic timing. So this is actually going out live. <laughs> And you can, you know, if you put your comments in, obviously we'll read them as we're going along and uh, you know, we'll, we, we'll respond. Why do you still use that Nathan King? He is you. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I've, I've so, Mum, <laughs> just turn it off. If you don't like it, don't watch it, all right? <laughs> ah, that's it. Right. So, orange. We love orange bass gear. Uh, we love orange bass gear for, for, for two reasons. One, because it's orange. Well, three reasons. Orange and they're lovely people, and they're English. Four reasons. Um, My wife's Dutch, and that's the, uh, and that's the Dutch national, national colour. And I like it. Huh? I didn't know she was Dutch. Oh, yeah. Does she like a bit of uh... <laughs> No, 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 Your Honour. She doesn't. Find a lunchtime. Um, they've got a new couple of new amplifiers, the four-stroke. Um... <laughs> Oh, no. Ah, no. That's literally all it. That's all it takes, Pete. Four strokes and he's out. Um, yeah. So, anyway, the four stroke. They do the three hundred and the five hundred, and these are rack mountable, um, pretty simple uh, amplifiers. Uh, fairly sophisticated EQ section, big volume control, big sort of compressiony, boosty sort of thing. Um, and they said to us, can you, you know, can you do a little review of those? So we said, yeah, of course we can. Um, and we kind of, Nathan and I were playing around before and we sort of went, the whole point of this amplifier, the whole message that um, Orange are trying to put across with this is their fundamental belief that ye olde fashioned AB, class AB power amp technology is a better sound or if we don't like using the word better, they prefer that sound, they prefer the feel of that kind of power amplifier to what has become increasingly popular in modern day amplifiers, which is class D amplifiers, yeah. or at least class D power amplifiers. Now class D, really, if you take tone out of the equation, which is I suppose ultimately subjective, class D kind of wins on every other count. You know, it, it's lighter, it's cheaper, it's more efficient, it um, has, automatic impedance matching um, you know, to the cabinet that you put in. Uh, and that's why you've seen over the last two or three years, this explosion in companies going, here's a little amplifier, it's like this, it weighs two kilos and it's a thousand watts and da 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 da. Yeah. And it, they've been hugely popular. You know, bass players from everywhere have gone, well, that sounds, that sounds like what I want. Um, except for Orange, really. Who, who, well, maybe not except for Orange. I wonder if there's probably one or two other manufacturers as well, but Orange definitely have just sort of gone, no, 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 right in their guitar amps as well. So, you know, they, they, they've just gone, we like the sound of yesteryear. Yeah, old school. Uh, old school. 
So we're going to run through the features of the. Um, we're going to run through some sounds of the four stroke five hundred. There's, there's a three hundred watt version as well. It looks utterly identical. Same housing, everything. Same knobs, just uh, a little bit cheaper and a little bit less output. Uh, we're running into the very cleverly designed Isobaric two twelve. So if you're looking at that, going there can't possibly be two speakers in there. There are, but it's one behind the other rather than the more conventional side by side. And sounds very nice, I would say. Yeah, you, you're a fan of this cab, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, it's good, yeah. So we'll play with that. And then what I've got is a popular, uh, a very popular um, 550 watt Class D bass amplifier. And we're going to bung that on top, and we're just going to literally compare the sounds. We're not going to review the other amplifier. We're not going to talk about features or anything like that. Just purely simply, we're going to turn them both up, go blah, 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 blah and take, uh, we'll talk about the, do we like the sound of one or the other? And we'll give it a bit of a road test uh, in terms of does, even though on paper the power output is almost identical, does it feel like one is moving more air than the other one? Right. Um, so, are you cool with that? Sounds great. Are you cool with that? Um, <laughs> what's your little yellow peril thing on the floor here? Oh, this nonsense, yeah. Oh, it's just a little looper thing. And, uh, you know, loopers are very popular. This one's it's got some little drum sounds in it, though. So. I've never heard of Nux. We don't sell them in Andertons. <coughs> no. Um, well, is it old? New? Must be old, isn't it? Well, it's got like a 1970s Bon Tempe drum machine built into it. Well, if it, if it was 1970s, they were way ahead of their time <laughs> in the technology front. I don't know. I bought this off, second hand off eBay. It's 50 quid. So Fair think, enough. Yeah. But I think we do, you know, if you look at the... If you're thinking, oh, that's a cool idea. I like the looper, and I particularly want one with a drum machine in definitely one of the Boss One stars and definitely one of the Digitech ones do. I think it's um, something we should look at in the future, Lee. In the future. <laughs> right, let's go. Two big knobs. Hey. That's me and Nathan. Uh, two other big knobs here. Uh, volume and this compressor, which is a compressor with like a boost circuit also built in. So as I wind this up, not only do we get more compression, but we get more sort of Good job. Yeah. yeah, quite considerably well. too. That's yes. kind of noticeable. A lot of compressors, just compressors. Mm. They, if anything, they might they make your thing quieter. This actually boosts it. So. And it's foot switchable. So if you needed a, a kind of, you know, a, like a rock thing to be able to just, you know, foot switch in, you can do that from here. Yeah. Little light at the front here, which shows you kind of as the compression is sort of, re you know, at its maximum, if you like, this kind of starts to flash on. Uh, EQ section, the knobs across the top are the, the sort of cut and boost controls. So center position, there's no change. That way cuts, that way boosts. And sort of just to the bottom left of each of these controls is its sort of parametric uh, Q section. It's, it's frequency. It's frequency, yeah. that's correct. Q, I believe, is the, uh, is the an acronym for... Is it? Yes, that's the Q bit of oh, okay. the EQ. Uh, is the, the parametric kind of what frequency is it going to adjust? Oh, okay. Uh, and they vary, you know, as you'd expect, bass goes from 40 to 400, lower mid goes from 80 to 800, uh, upper mid goes from 250 to 2,500, and uh, up, you know, up treble goes from 550 to uh, 5,500. What um, Q stands for? Probably well, it's probably Greek, isn't it? Or quotient. I have a. Could be. Oh, it could be. If it isn't, it should. I like quotient. I like quotient. Good quotient. Word, portion and elbow. They're all really. What's the word when a when a is it, is it onomatopoeic when a word just sounds like, like what it is? What it is. Mm. 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 Put your favourite onomatopoeic word in the comments section. Nothing else, just the one word. Pouch. And, uh, and we will in when, at the next <laughs> video session, we will just repeatedly say our favourite onomatopoeic word for 20 minutes <laughs> that'll be a whole video <laughs> anyway uh, right let's uh let's go with none of this compression on and all the eq flat and the volume about halfway up let's just get some tones and then i'll fiddle with the eq so no compression for this first bit just just tone and we're using uh we're using the orange bass right uh, we'll use this for a minute and then, you know, if you're more at home with your status and it's got the extra string on it, it might uh, give a, I quite like the idea of a five string with this to sort of really yeah. show what sort of guts are on it, but let's, let's have a, a noodle around with that for a minute. The O bass, by the way, is a relatively affordable, um, new bass from Orange, comes in black, white, or of course, guess what other colour? Silver. 
No. Oh. Red. Orange, obviously. Right. Uh, let's go. Right, coming at you. Coming at you. <laughs> Let's do that with the five string. I think we'll just swip over to the five string now because people will get a, a, a sort of a, a better representation of this some pretty tremendous bass end on this thing, even though the cab's small. Oh, you're listening, by the way. Uh, you are listening, by the way, I'm just checking. Um, <laughs> to, that wasn't a question. Yeah, to, it was a statement. Yeah, it was a, it was a demand. Um, to a mix of, sometimes you're hearing the DI output on the back of the uh, amplifier, sometimes you're hearing the microphone, sometimes you're hearing a blend of the two, until we start doing the comparison between the class AB amplifier and the class D, where of course we won't use the DI at all, you will just hear how we're driving the cabinet. For obvious reasons, because of course the DI you won't be able to hear any difference between the two power amps. Um, just do that again and I'll just kind of try and find a nice sweet spot for this. Very, very natural sounding, pleasant to listen to kind of amplifier. So now we're going to wind in the compressor. Um, hopefully our sound man will keep an eye on levels and stuff because we don't want to clip this or anything like that. Because Are you listening? As I wind in the compressor, it does get a bit louder. Is he asleep? So here we go. A little bit now. Or in fact, start with none and I'll just wind it in as you're playing. You go in plectrum. Yeah. Why not? Uncomplied. I like this it's sound. It's got you're, character, isn't it? Yeah, it's and you're, some you're, you're kind of, I guess, roughly speaking, roughly, roughly, ah! the, 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 the whole of this um, sort of compressory boost thing appears to be roughly equivalent to about three sort of lines on, on, on the volume. So kind of like all the way up, I was kind of backing it down like two or three lines just to sort of keep the volume the same. So mm. um, it's pokey and it kind of, 
uh, absolutely the cabinet, despite the fact this is a 600 watt cabinet, felt like with that on full, woo, and uh, you know, this round about here, it, it kind of, the cabinet almost felt like, oh, I don't really want to do any more, you know, please don't give me any more. So it, it might well be that, again, this amplifier is, you know, it wants to be loud. It probably wants more cabinets on it, bigger cabinets, it's 15 demanding. inch driver. It's needy, it's a very it's needy, needy amplifier. It's a rock, it's a rock amplifier, isn't it? It just wants to Keep give it some. Yeah, that keeps on giving. Um, Stuff on the back's very, very, very simple. Uh, you've got your speaker outputs, you've got a balanced output, a line output, and I think that's it. I think that's, that is it. Oh, and a fan. A fan because, of course, as I say, with Class D and Class AB, Class AB is oldie fashion technology, not terribly efficient, so the amp gets hot, okay. uh, and the fan is designed to so the hotter the amplifier gets, the more power is lost to heat rather than being transferred into No uh, fan speaker. noise though, is there? I'm only, it's a it... thermostatic one, oh, so okay. it will only come on when it reaches, when the amp reaches a certain good. temperature. But if you can keep the amplifier cool, um, more power is then delivered to the amplifier, less lost in heat, and therefore speaker sounds louder. It's really interesting stuff. Quite often when you have like crappy PA stuff, um, you can be really, really loud at the beginning of the evening and then by three hours into it you think i'm pretty sure everything sounds like half as loud as it did yeah. and that's usually rubbish technology power amplifiers that just as they get hotter become do you think uh, that's what less, it is because no, it i would have thought it, it was is. like do your ears also oh you, you're get to the for sure it's ear fatigue body, it's ear fatigue as well but 100 percent, it's um uh as the power amp the longer the power amp's on for the more it heats up, the less efficient it becomes oh, and the more right, power okay. is lost. Well, you do um, know your PA? I, I do know, again, I've, I've, one of the earliest things that I was kind of shown in, in um, AMP technology is because there's no sort of like world governing body of this is the law when it comes to um, rating your power amplifier in terms of how many watts will your power amp mm. do. Some, uh, all this sort of old fashioned, like, what you would class as the sort of prestigious professional power amp manufacturers would always rate their power amplifiers as like an average rating across a wide spectrum of frequencies across a, a long period of, of playing time, you know, like 24 hours or something like that. And they kind of go, yeah. if this amp was on with a whole spectrum of frequencies on it over 24 hours, what is the average output that you get? And that's what we'll rate it at. Right. And then in- Was that RMS or is that something else? RMS is, is uh, just, You've got two, you've got RMS output and peak, I think, haven't you? So I'm not entirely sure how you chuck that into the equation, but but more recently, particularly with the onset of, of amps coming out of China and brands just trying to go, oh, look, here's a thousand watt amplifier and it's only 99 pounds and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. I termed the, you know, I used to call them, they were the, they were the downhill wind behind you ratings. Mm. So you could switch the amplifier on, put like a one kilohertz sine wave through it and go, how loud was that for the first half a second? Oh, it was a thousand watts. So, you know, we didn't lie. It is a, it did do a thousand watts. Right. But, but then you could get, you know, that's why when you're out there, you know, some thousand watt amplifiers just sound massively louder than other thousand watt amplifiers because two hours into a gig with, you know, a full spectrum of stuff going through okay. it. So take the claims with a pinch of salt. Yeah, take the claims with a pinch of salt to a, a certain like extent. A bit like car emission results. And, you know, try stuff. You know, if you're in a shop, physically turn it up. And if it doesn't sound that loud, it probably isn't. Yeah. Um, and uh, and go with prestigious brands. You know, trust trust in the brand. You know, if a, if a brand has a reputation for making cheap gear, it's probably using the downhill with the wind behind it rating. And if a brand's got a reputation for, you know, building professional gear over you know 50 years or whatever it's probably not anyway enough speaky speaky so i dived into the store and i picked up a, I a drive popular, I, di I dived into the store oh he dived up, uh one of the most popular and most compact class d bass amplifiers that we sell uh which is the tc bh 550 um i wouldn't i wouldn't put tc in the bracket of you know the worst offending downhill with the wind behind us brands and hello certainly within the tc range they have everything from very pro gear to fairly affordable gear um but this is one of the more affordable 
uh, one of the more affordable heads that they okay. do. How much is that? Um, these are about four ish, four, five hundred quid, something like that. Okay. So actually, in fairness, it's a little bit cheaper than that. But right. uh, but I grabbed about it because I thought it's the same sort of it's the same sort of um, power rating. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to put all the EQ flat. Yeah. On both amplifiers. Well, this is basically just to show you the differences. You know, we're not trying to say one's better than the other. We're just showing you the differences. I'll, I'll be completely honest with you. This is a live demo. We haven't actually plugged this in yet to see whether it sounds any better or worse. Certainly. All the things that I said about Class D, you know, it's smaller, lighter, cheaper, you know, all that kind of stuff is absolutely true. So if, if you were, um, if that's your overriding, you know, priority list on your sort of shopping list, if mm -hmm. you like, you probably are going to go Class D. Um, but if tone and power are, are kind of overriding and you're happy to I mean, I, I've picked this up versus this. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll put the spec of this on our website, so you can find a link below. But just lifting it up, this feels about five times heavier than this. And I'm not exaggerating there, literally it's about five times heavier. So well, let's four stroke. So it's probably got, you know, it's, at least a six cylinder. Yeah, this is actually, you, you're six seeing this light on here and thinking it's running on electricity. Obviously it isn't. It is, a, as long as you're using the correct kind of lawnmower fuel. For a... <laughs> anyway, right. So do it. Let's get using the five. Let's use the full range of the five string and everything. Okay. Let's just do this. All right. Yes. So it's cleaner sounding, isn't it? It's it has. I think it's got less bottom end. It's, it's on certainly that just set flat. It's hard to. I would it's agree. More mid mid range. Yeah, range, I mean, I, I guess obviously the tone stacks in each amplifier are going to be different. Yeah. So it's hard to really go. Perhaps this is you know, perhaps this isn't such an ideal experiment as I thought it was. But as orange don't do class, a class D amplifier. It's uh, well, that's only. yeah. Uh, but it's it, you're completely right. You. The stuff in the room was was going more, wasn't it? All the all the fittings that vibrated see more. Me, see me full that. of sound with the orange. This I don't know whether or not it has like a a, 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 a differently shelved bass EQ to kind of not um, overwork the power amp as much. You know, just kind of perhaps it's sh perhaps the bass response is shelved off a little bit. Yeah. It certainly wasn't a massively noticeable difference in volume. Uh, more type of sound wasn't it you know as you well, said the volume was, seemed to be pretty similar yeah it was the tone that was that was let's, different let's uh eq up a stick, sound stick a bit more bottom end in it yeah and let's just see if it starts to give up maybe a bit but um okay let's just just play quite noisy yeah. it is <laughs> So I'm, we're only laughing because this, this is a trick of, uh, not, it's unfair to single out TC, this is a trick for most more affordable amp manufacturers. And that's all the volume happens between naught and halfway. Yeah. And then from halfway to the top, almost nothing else happens. And psychologically, of course, what you think then is, blimey, if it's this loud here, how much is it gonna be here? And the truth is, not, not that much louder. Yeah. So that was kind of interesting. Now I. Let's see if orange is similar. So anyway, yeah. back to the orange. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> um, 
so we're just again we'll max this out and we'll we'll drive oh my goodness i just know this is going to be brutally loud so let's try uh, it with yeah, it. I'll, I'll, I'll wrong with you. it a bit more like i was doing before all right well i'll start off with a bit less of that because that's a bit yeah it's a bit brutal man, that, isn't man, it? Man. okay go I think that's kind of our experiment kind of done really, isn't it? I mean, it, I'm glad, well, do you know what? I'm glad you did it because I think it just shows up that the amps just have different, completely different tonal yeah. qualities, you know, and some yeah. people are going to love that. Yeah. Some people are going to prefer that. I, I think that, that, so one of the things that I should qualify here as well is because of the way this class D amplifier works in, in the TC one, you are getting the full 550 watts into this cabinet, uh, despite the fact that this is an eight-ohm cabinet. The orange, because uh, it's ye olde fashioned power amp technology, is only delivering about two-thirds of its potential output okay. into an eight-ohm cabinet. We would have need to have got either a four-ohm cabinet or two eight-ohm cabinets to, to get the maximum out of it. So yep. I think it's fair to say, and I know it's always hard or well, impossible on in YouTube land to really measure volume. It's much easier for you to hear tonal differences. I think it's fair to say that, you know, in a in a fist fight with basically, you know, a couple of cabs on it and tonked up, the, the, the this kind of amplifier is definitely going to sort of batter this kind of amplifier for just pure volume. But, you know, it, there's a little bit of me as well, goes, so what nowadays? You know, it's like people are DIing into PAs and... So I, I, I really don't think that we've... I think orange are fine to go down their route, and orange, I think there's there's well, an old school mentality there. Isn't listen, there? They're, they're, at the end of the day, you know, one ain't better than the other. They're just different, mm. you know, which is fine. Yeah. I think there's room for all that. I, I, I personally, I do like the sound of this. Yes, I, I think agree. it's got a really nice tone, yeah. um, and it's great being just A, B, and the two. Like I say, it ain't better than that. It's just different. It's just different, isn't it? And I, and again, different manufacturers of, of of amplifiers. So you know, you've got TC and you've got um, Mark, Mark Bass, and ton, tons of different. Um, PV that are all doing the whole class. Do you think? I oh, think, hundreds of them. I think uh, some of the Ashdown range. Doing one. Yeah, I think some of the Ashdown range is class yeah, D. Yeah, they've got a little uh, um, one. So, uh, but anyway, and obviously they're all going to claim different stuff. And but I, I think if you wanted to, to just have a safe rule, that I would always assume that a class D power amplifier is not going to be as loud in a straightforward fist fight as a as an AB amplifier. But as I said, that might not matter. No. You know, and may, and maybe the way to counter that for you is to go and get the thousand watt class D amplifier then rather than the five hundred watt. Sure then. thing, yeah. Um, I like T C might get fifteen hundred watt. Yeah. So uh, you can get some insanely loud uh what was that P V one we did the other day? Two thousand watt peak in a little box like was that, it? wasn't it? Yeah. Crikey. So there we are. I mean I again I I, I do like, I think Orange have kind of carved their little niche out. I like the fact that they're there sort of going, you know, we don't like progress. And, you know, and it's like, <laughs> we don't like, we just like it how it used to be. And, and you know, and, and I'm sure it's lots good. Listen, of, I think it's good then they're not trying to be the same. They're not yeah. jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. They're just sticking with the guns and doing what they do. Yeah. And that's cool, you know. And I certainly, I think, you know, if you were, if you were doing, if you were doing like your theatre gigs and stadium gigs and you wanted, you know, an eight by ten and a, great big growly dirty amplifier on top yeah this is the kind of tech that you want to be going with yeah. uh you know if you're doing a little club gig and and you're going to di out into the pa and you just want something you can wander in one hand base and the other you know then obviously this is the kind of tech that you're probably going to go for but look mm. there you go i i feel almost like we've done a sensible review for a change with 
borderline no stupidity in it, which... Um, uh, so do I. I certainly think we should uh, remedy that in the next video. I, I'm sure we will. We will. Oh, it's, I forgot, of course. Uh, sorry, this is... How are the, where are the comments coming in? Because this is being live streamed, isn't it? Let's have a little, little one. It's, it's that same one again, I'm afraid. It's just, yeah. You know, sorry about that. That's just pretty much the same comment over and over again. Over and over. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I'll get someone else next time. <laughs> he I'm won't. only kidding. He won't. He won't get anybody as cheap. <laughs> Right then. Bye, Nath. Bye, Nath. Bye, people. <laughs> Bye, Bye, Bye. 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 Lovely to... Thanks. Yeah, it was good, wasn't nice it? Nice one. Send me your invoice, and, uh, but uh, that'd be the, the, the... I'll see you in about I'll five get P, I'll minutes. get you P45. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you play something? Do play something. Right. Play out. Wait, get your sticks then. Okay. Oh, yeah, sorry. Count me in. Two, three, four... Hang on. No, that's the wrong one. No, two, three, four... No, it stopped! Two, three, four.